There are many reasons why Vancouver pre-sale industry is currently struggling and why a lot of new developments are actually getting cancelled. But one of the main reasons that nobody seems to touch on too much is the fact that whatever is being built right now, the product itself is not very exciting for majority of buyers. Vancouver developers tailoring their buildings towards investors is nothing new. In fact, it's an open secret, so to speak. There are various articles written about this phenomenon. Well, now there's actually a new study by Stats Can that looked at the size of units in major Canadian cities, in Toronto, in Vancouver, and in Montreal. And the findings are not actually that surprising, but I think there is a deeper meaning behind these numbers. The study has found that developers are building smaller and smaller units to tailor these units towards investors. In fact, in 1990s, the average square footage of a condo was 912 square feet. Now, after 2016, this number is about 790 square feet. But there is another finding that I think is even more important, is the ratio of units below 600 square feet to the ratio of units above 800 square feet. So below 600 square feet, there is a total of 58% of all inventory being built. And as far as units that are larger than 800 square feet, that number is only about 39%, which means that majority of new units are under 600 square feet. But of course, the variation in this number will depend greatly on the type of building you're looking at and on different neighborhoods. From my experience, the high rise buildings tend to have smaller units, even some studio, one bedroom, they're really tailoring their units towards investors. The low rise buildings, wooden construction, these type of buildings tend to have more two bedroom units. Still majority of units are one bedrooms, but sort of the ratio is better of one bedroom units to two bedroom units. The one thing that this study didn't really talk about that I personally can fill in the blanks as a realtor for the last 10 years is the fact that not only units are getting smaller, the layouts are not as important for developers because they know they're gonna sell these units, majority of the units to investors. Investors are not gonna live in these units themselves. They really care about the price and price per square foot, how much money they can rent the unit out for. The layout is sort of becoming secondary. How much light is the unit getting? what type of view the unit has, these type of things are not as important as the price and the square footage, which means that a lot of these layouts are not very functional. You yourself probably wouldn't want to live in a unit like that. There are weird corners, uh, the furniture is hard to place, you have awkward shapes, the units are not getting a lot of light, all kinds of funky things are happening with these layouts. There are even YouTube videos from realtors talking about uh, terrible floor plans and these videos are getting a lot of views. I again, it's not something new here. We all know about terrible floor plans in some of the new buildings. Not all buildings, but a lot of them do have that. So what happens when the industry is targeting investors and investors stop buying? Well, then you have a real problem on your hands. You have to sort of shift focus and see uh, different markets who would be buying. The other segment of the market that would be interested in these sort of starter homes, the studios, one bedrooms, one bedroom and dance are first time home buyers. And again, anecdotally speaking, as a real estate agent for the last 10 years, I can tell you that a lot of first time home buyers are not exactly interested in these units. I hear terms like cookie cutter and shoebox being thrown around a lot when I first sort of interview buyers and see what they're looking for. They are more interested in a bit of an older strata, maybe something built in early 2000s, 2010s, that has a bit of a more open layout, a bit of a better floor plan. They are starting to realize, and by they I mean educated buyers, that these new units are not really targeted towards livability, they're targeted towards making money. And that's one of the bigger misconceptions that people have about developers. Developers are not in a business of building housing. I mean, of course, building housing is what they do, but they're in the business of selling real estate. They're in the business of making money. Uh, so I don't blame them for sort of tailoring their business towards investors. Of course, that's what was making money. That was the most lucrative 
part of the market. They're trying to squeeze in as many one bedroom units into the building as possible, because believe it or not, selling two one bedroom units was easier than selling one two bedroom unit. There's just a larger market for these sort of smaller units. Uh, because that's what investors are looking for. In fact, whenever you go to a presentation center, probably not right now, but a few years ago, if you were to go on the first day of the opening, the lowest floors and the smallest units are always sold out first because that's what investors are looking for. The lack of focus on usable floor plans and sort of livable units, the units that would appeal to people that are looking for themselves is another issue behind uh, this avalanche of problems that developers in Vancouver are facing. And I don't mean to imply that if they change the floor plans, all of a the sudden there will be a rush of buyers coming to buy these units and there will be a lineup. No, of course not. But I think realistically speaking, when you only focus on developers, or not only, I shouldn't say that, that's an absolute, but majority of your focus is on investors uh, and then investors stop buying well now you're in real trouble so i think i hope at least for the next five to ten years we will see a focus shift from investment units only to more of a family friendly units there is initiative to pass a single staircase uh, by law in vancouver i hope that passes they're actually voting on it today or tomorrow uh, and i'm gonna make a separate video about it once it passes or maybe if it doesn't pass i'll talk more about it uh, that will help improve livability and usability of a lot of floor plans, especially in low rise buildings. And uh, there are some things that are happening to sort of encourage developers to build uh, family friendly units. And one of the things that is encouraging them is the lack of investor buyers, which will mean that hopefully they will shift their focus towards younger families, first time home buyers and they will focus on maybe not squeezing as many units as possible into the building, but more making the units more usable. And in the future, I'll try to keep you updated with any changes that are happening in the Vancouver real estate market. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss those videos when they do come out. Also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you wanna be even more informed, I have an absolutely free newsletter. It comes out every month. You can unsubscribe at any point if you don't like it. It's not a sales pitch, it just sort of gives you everything you need to know about what's going on in Vancouver's real estate market. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you next time. Bye.